Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Are you ready? Let's, let's make demand for our daily bread before we go into today's word. Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I, I love the word of God. You know, yesterday I was sharing, I was sharing something practical and very important with you. And, and I, I'm trusting the spirit of God. We're going to continue in that line. Now, this is the last week of the month of November. So I'm trusting the Holy Ghost to fill you. And, and, and you will get up and begin to demonstrate boldness in all that you do. Our text scripture again is from Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Praise God. I want to speak the word of God with boldness. What do I do? Get up. Trust in the Lord. I was telling you yesterday. Whatever you see happen in your church. Now, when I mean whatever you see, if you if you attend a Bible-believing church and a church that believes in faith and uh, the Word of God and the demonstration of the Spirit of God, whatever you see happen in church should freely happen in your home. Good things now I'm talking about, praise God. Yeah. Oh, some of you don't, don't realize that you can cast out devils. And so sometimes you allow demons to be speaking around you. Oh. There are times you need to just say, stop in the name of Jesus. And the noise will stop. Listen, let me tell you something. None of you hearing my voice right now should accept a life of oppression of whatever kind. None of you. None of you. You shouldn't accept a life of oppression. Oh, Pastor George, every night I sleep, uh, something used to come press me in the night. No, it's a no-no. It's a no-no. Because you find lots of believers who are like, I'm, 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 it's not like I don't believe God's word. I'm just waiting for God to do certain things in my life so that I can have a testimony to share. Uh -uh. See, the word of God is true. Whether you've seen it work or not. And the reason we have testimonies and testimonies that are true, I told you that's the importance of the Bible. See, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies that are true. Every story written in the Bible is true. Now, I know there are there is a bit of confusion, especially recently. You know, I, I watched a video um, of one of the elders in the body of Christ from Ghana, um, Mensa Otabe. Okay, and he he was sharing. I think it was a ministers' conference, at about thirty four minutes video a minister's conference and he was sharing to, with pastors a beautiful message he was preaching. Now, I respect him a lot and I have, I have I first listened to him when I was a teenager. He was invited to my church back then in Port Harcourt. They were very young. Very, very young there. And that's the first time I heard that name. I can't even remember what he preached then. I think he came like twice or so. And then recently, more or more recently, on the internet, you see his message. Oh, that's this man, you know, praise God. And then you're listening. Now, those are elders in the body of Christ. And when they speak, it's important. You're listening. You're listening to them, okay? But then, um, when listening, you should be able to tell that, okay, um, this is this is not very clear or this is not as it's supposed to be, okay? 
he made a statement in that video I was referring to, and he said that nobody receives revelation from the Lord today. And the way he communicated that statement. Now, if you listen to the, from the beginning, when he began to teach, there were some things he was pointing out to. But I think that's, that statement just kind of takes everything <laughs> out of line to me. Okay. When you say nobody receives revelation from the Lord today, nobody can say he's received a revelation from the Lord. Now, in the context of what he was defining before interpretation, inspiration, and all those things, you will understand what he's saying. But then a blanket statement like that can throw one who have no understanding of these things completely off balance. And two, even a young pastor who, who is not experienced in the things of God. Because I hear sometimes people preach that experience does not matter. Don't preach your experience. Preach the Bible. And that's faulty. That's faulty. You can't tell me, preach the Bible, don't preach your experience. No, it's wrong. Tell us your experience. You see, when we hear your experience, then we tell if it is from God or not. See, your experience must show the pattern of other experiences that are recorded. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, that's when we know that you, you are experiencing. Now, why I say that statement is not right is because in my own personal dealings with God and, and study of history, scriptures, I do a lot of study, okay? I, I came to that conclusion that there was a time I actually said it. I came to that conclusion that it appears to many people who love the truth, it appears the Bible have become our limitation. Yeah, nah, yeah. What I say? Now, understand, understand something. Because we kind of make this book we call the Holy Bible, okay? And this version that has 66 books right we make it the focus of the word of god and so we we tell people everything you need to know about god is here you don't bother looking out for anything else now truly speaking everything you need to know about god is here but this will not make you know god nah it won't now, like he, he said in that video, there's a general knowledge of God and then there's a specific knowledge of God. This will give you the general knowledge of God. But he said, this will give you the specific knowledge of God. No, this will give you the general knowledge of God. Now, it is when you begin to practice, when you begin to live the life, you will begin to enter into the specific knowledge of God. Most charismatic believers, or, and that's, that's a trap they try to, that we always try to enter into. When we make Christianity a whole thing as though we are trying to interpret the Bible. No! Christianity is not locked up in the Bible. Christianity is locked up in the Holy Spirit. Please understand what I'm saying to you because it's dicey if you are not experienced and you're not really a practicing believer, you will not understand what I'm saying. First and foremost, most of the people we read about in the Bible never read the Bible. Even the apostles, now understand this, they didn't have access to the scriptures, even the scrolls, like we do a Bible today. None of them had personal scriptures. The best they had 
was when they gather in the synagogue, because most Jews grew up like that, okay? So when they gather in the synagogue, they read the scrolls to them. They have, they have them in the Bible, in, in their homes. Now, apart from Paul, Apostle Paul, who was a student, remember the other disciples were normal people, fishermen, tax collectors, so none of them were groomed in the doctrine or in the understanding of scriptures. Please understand what I'm saying. So, Peter, for example, didn't know scriptures because he read them. No. On the day of Pentecost, Peter spoke and in his speaking, he quoted the book of Psalms. Not because he read it. Now, they read it. Please understand what I'm saying. They read it. But they were not like, I've studied this thing. Just like you went to children's church, okay? Now, there are things, there are scriptures that were read. There were memory verses you did in children's church. And that's how the Jewish people are trained. There were memory verses you read in children's church that are still in your heart, even though you've not been to church for the past 10 years. When somebody is preaching and, and, and reads a scripture, you can read it to him verbatim, even though you've not been to church for 15 years. Why? Because of the foundation that was put in you. Now, Peter, on the day of Pentecost, was quoting the book of Psalms freely without reading it. He wasn't looking, open your Bibles. No, freely. The early apostles, they don't preach like we do today. Put a, put a Bible before you and say, open your Bibles. To, no, they didn't. They spoke freely as the Spirit of God gives them control. So they share their life. They share what they, are, they, they, they see around them. They share. So there is this mistake we make. Please understand what I'm saying because this thing is deep in my heart. And whenever I hear a minister talk along this line, I, I go, dear Lord, when I want to grow past this thing. Okay, first and foremost, this Bible that we have today, I always say to some people sometimes, they go, oh, what I say? No, they say, this is the canonized scripture. Who canonized it? A king named King James gathered a few people, not necessarily spiritual men. They were theologians. If they do that today, many of us will reject the, the, the things they come up with. If today they say PFN or CAN is setting up a, a committee to look into the writings and canonize the most important scriptures, some of us will reject it. You know what I'm talking about. Ah, they are not spiritual enough. But in those days, a king named King James just felt, and, and you would not believe this for political reason. Yes. It was for political reason that these 66 books came about. Funny, isn't it? Yes. But do you, do you mean that the Bible is not? No, 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 no. Please understand what I'm saying. What, why am I saying for political reason? Because the word of God or the scriptures is far beyond the 66 books. They drew this out of all the scriptures and writings that were available, okay? Number two, if they should gather everything, just like John said, even only the works of Jesus, the world will not contain the book that will be written. So now it doesn't mean God only reveals himself in this book. You'll be making a big blunder saying that because you still don't understand God. There are places where the Bible have not reached, but God has reached. There are men who will give you revelations of God. Oh, oh, remember Cornelius. Cornelius haven't received the gospel. Okay? But then he had a dealing with God. He was giving arms. How did he know to give arms? It was his lifestyle. He must have received some measure of truth in his heart until the angel appeared to him and said, now send men. Now, remember, when Peter came to Cornelius, Peter wasn't the one that prayed for them to receive the Holy Ghost. Peter was still speaking. I believe Peter wouldn't have dared it. So God knew. And so why did God send Peter all the way? To connect. Because see, there is something we don't understand. 
But after Jesus left, okay, and then the Holy Ghost came, there is something God began to do. He began to spread something, and that is the blessing of Abraham. That's another day's story. He began to spread the blessing of Abraham because he had told Abraham, through you, all the families of the earth would be blessed. So now when God finds a godly man named Cornelius, he said, okay, I've got to connect your faith into the blessing. So he says, send men to Joppa to call. Now Peter's coming did one thing, shared faith together. And then that contact was made so that the blessing of Abraham may come on him. Oh, not only Cornelius was the it wasn't only Cornelius that was that loved God all over the world in different places even till this day there are places the Bible have not reached yet there are places that they've not literally heard the gospel of Jesus Christ but you will find that there are people who have made contact with God there and you find them and you preach to them you said yeah I understand what you're saying because there is a man that appeared to me and he used to tell me this and this. Yes! Now I said, if you're not a practicing Christian, you won't know most of these things. But if you are, you will encounter testimonies. You will encounter people who will share their experience and then you will go back wondering. Now this is how it works. If you're practicing, you will encounter things. And then you go back and like, wow, Lord, what's that? What's the meaning of that? And then the Lord will now open your understanding. Okay? Hey, and that's what I said in so so and so place. Oh, now the more you experience this, the more you begin to realize God is bigger than every box we have created around him. So you don't tell me God cannot reveal himself except through these books. Huh? Moses didn't have this book. Please remember. He didn't. In the days of Moses, there was no book of the law. He was the one that wrote it. <laughs> so now, now imagine he was he was in his in-laws place, you know, living his life, tending to his flock, and then suddenly he heard the voice of God. So there was no Samuel to tell him when you hear it, God speak like this, this is how to respond. No. There was a bush set on fire. He looked like, hey, I, I, hold on. By now, now of course, you know, you, you see something. Ah, who set up this fire? That's the first question you ask. Who set up this fire? I thought I was the only one here. Maybe there was an assistant there somewhere. Hey, did you set up that fire? Which fire, sir? There's a bush on fire. No, there's no bush on fire, sir. Ah, are you not seeing this bush on fire? No. Okay. Ah, is something wrong with me? And then he began to, hey. Mm -hmm. By now, this part is supposed to turn black, turn to ashes. Hold on, this bush is not burning, but it's on fire. What's going on here? <laughs> God. What's going on here? And there you go. He went and suddenly a voice spoke to him. Moses. What's going on? Take off your shoes. Now, when you hear take off your shoes, you know you've heard something. <laughs> yeah, that's a command. Take off your shoes. Because so the voice of God comes with an awareness. So he took off his shoes. Now God had his attention. And God began to speak to Moses. The same way he spoke to David. How do you think, how do you think David knew the things he knew? See, please understand these things. Please don't let anybody, don't let anybody deceive you. Now, not because they intend to deceive. Sometimes it's just we call it old school way of reasoning. And and most times, for example, in in the case of um, mental tabling, the the concern was let's keep this thing together. Let's keep it safe so that we don't keep having issues and, and problems now you understand that all those thoughts but then the truth about it is it doesn't matter the kind of chaos that there is or that exists jesus in the midst of the chaos is building his church so when we now lock 
understanding to one's third point. I think we'll be doing more damage to the truth than exposing it. Yeah, I believe, I believe, let people find the truth for themselves. And the one who is the giver of the truth will eventually come and show. We, we think this work is our work. I think that's the mistake we are making. We think it's our work. It's not our work. So we want to look at people and say, oh, that's why the church is not progressing. Because in trying to say, stick with the word, we are forming another kind of religion. Forgetting that God is beyond us all. Allow God to deal with his people. If a pastor says, I've received revelation from the Lord, allow him speak freely. You may learn one or two things, even if he may go off. But definitely, you will learn one or two things. Can we let the Spirit of God deal with his people so that we will grow and not be stunted in one, in one room like we must all behave like this? Who said so? And the Lord give us understanding. Praise God. It's part of boldness. Because when you when the Holy Ghost ministers to you, don't start thinking that this is where the challenge is. There are people, there are things I've received from the Lord that I've had nobody talk about. But of course, the Holy Ghost Himself will show you because it, it happens like Lord. <laughs> How do I explain this? How do I teach this? They said, let me show you. Then he begins to take me from scriptures, from Genesis up to Revelation. And then you go, how come nobody's talking about this? How come nobody knows this? Yes, because of the traditional way of, you know, kind of holding things. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.